We have breaking news right now in Donald Trump's criminal hush money case. Just moments ago, Trump's team filing a new motion calling to dismiss it, citing presidential immunity and his victory in the 2024 election. Now, that comes one day after Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg told the court sentencing should be postponed while the appeals process plays out, potentially even postponed until after Trump's second term in office. Judge Juan Mershon would need to approve this proposal. It's all uncharted territory, as this country has never before had a president-elect facing a criminal sentencing. <laughs> Another W for Donald Trump. Man, oh man, every time you turn around, this guy is racking up the dubs. We're going to win so much. We're going to win at every level. We're going to win economically. We're going to win with the economy. We're going to win with military. We're going to win with health care and for our veterans. We're going to win with every single facet. We're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Mr. President, it's too much. And I'll say, no, it isn't. We have to keep winning. We have to win more. We're going to win more. Jesus Christ. The fake judge from New York, the corrupt judge, Judge Rashawn, has been kicking down the sentencing for the last, what, two, three months now? He refused to sentence Donald Trump. And so today, he adjourned the courts. In other words, it's going to be indefinitely. I think, personally, that he's going to dismiss the case and now they're running scared. The teacher James is running scared. The judge, Alvin Bragg, they're all <laughs> running scared because they overplayed their hand. It's frustrating when you got your peers and your family and friends, when you try to tell them that, man, this all been the farce. This all been made up by the judge, uh, by Biden, the DOJ. It was all to get Donald Trump out of the race. And to tell people that, especially your liberal friends, they were like, oh man, why would the government do that? Why would they waste all that money? He did some crimes, we just haven't caught up to it. At the same time, Trump was also facing the reemergence of Stormy Daniels, who wanted to go public about their sexual encounter. And that is when he entered into the scheme to keep her quiet by paying her off and illegally hiding the payoff in his business records in order to save his campaign, which of course is a crime. All of the alphabet government agencies came after Donald Trump. The IRS, the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, they all went through his records with a fine tooth comb. And all they found was paperwork crime. It appears Trump's luck has finally run out in the form of 12 New York jurors who yesterday found him guilty on all 34 counts charged against him in his hush money election interference trial, making him the first former U.S. president to be convicted of a felony. It was so bad that it's, it, they had to charge him 34 times with the same charge. So now the judge got some egg on his face. He's running scared. Now he's trying to do the right thing. It's a little bit too late now. Back to July when the Supreme Court said the president, the former president, does enjoy some immunity, some shield for prosecution, at least for some core duties that happened while he was president. And to the extent that any of that type of information is used in a trial, even if it had to do with something completely unrelated, like a hush money payment, then that means the jury got some information it shouldn't have had. And so the defense team used that ruling from the Supreme Court to try to say we should wipe out this entire case in New York, even though it had nothing to do with his office of presidency, because because some evidence came in that they thought was barred and should be off limits, the entire thing should be wiped away. Then, of course, he was re-elected. He was elected as uh, the next president on November 5th. And because of that, the defense also thinks there's no way that he should be hauled into court in New York City and sentenced because he's the president-elect. So because of those two issues, which are really different and independent, that's why the defense thinks this entire case should, be a go, should go away. Donald Trump for the win. Splash. Now, all you talking heads out there, all you haters, all you political commentary, I never want to hear the words, he's a felon. He was never a felon because the judge never sentenced him. He was charged, and now we see that the charges are all made up. 
So I never want to hear this again. And I think if Mr. Trump hear anybody say that he's a convicted felon, he's going to slap a lawsuit on your ass, deservingly. You know, I think what we're seeing is why in the history of America, no major party has ever nominated a criminal um, as a, a presidential candidate. Everything that Trump been saying from the beginning, the lawfare, the FBI wiretaps, everything he said from day one, we thought it was conspiracy. You people thought it was conspiracy. It was just delayed truth. And now it's all been exposed. He's been telling the truth from the beginning. And the best that you got was paperwork crime. Now, the next thing that need to come up is that E. Jean Carroll. That thing need to be dismissed and she need to be shamed. She need to be walked down New York City and we all should do the shame at her. Shame. 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 And you remember when she went to Rachel Madcow's show and just the interview with her gloating you know she was lying. You've talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be, what that might look yes, like? Yes, Rachel. Yes. Tell me. I had such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? <laughs> it's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? No? Oh. All right. All right. Okay. That's a joke. <laughs> That's a Although, joke. If, if me fishing in France... Could yeah. do something for women's rights, I would take the hit. You know, I would obviously uh, take one for the team. Rachel Madcow didn't want nothing to do with it. Because she know that we know that she was lying. So it's really not about me anymore. We have moved beyond me. And as you say, the fight now is really to take back our future. This is a man who stacked the Supreme Court, took away women's rights over their own bodies. We would like to be a part of turning um, our eyes to the future and taking back our rights. Now that case, with that alleged essay, is going to be dismissed also. Today we presented oral argument before the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in one of two cases brought against President Trump by E. Jean Carroll. Now it's really important to remember that E. Jean Carroll's story at its heart is an utterly implausible he said, she said story. There is no corroboration for anything she has ever claimed about President Trump. There are no corroborating witnesses, as President Trump alluded to. There is not confirmatory DNA. No police report was filed at the time of this alleged incident. She was unable to identify when this incident occurred until quite recently. No surveillance evidence or witnesses have ever uh, been found or come forward confirming any aspect of E. Jean Carroll's story. Total phony story. And I feel sad that I have to come up here and explain it. I have all this legal talent, but legal talent cannot overcome rigged judges. They can't overcome a 4% Republican area. And I'm disappointed in my legal talent, I'll be honest with you. They're good, they're good people. They're talented people. Today at the uh, trial, they didn't mention the, the dress. So the Monica Lewinsky type dress was a big part of the trial. Big, big part of the trial. I said, why didn't you mention that? And I heard there was a dress involved. And I wasn't frightened at all because I did nothing with her. Never, never touched this woman, saw this woman, knew, had no idea who she was. But they have a dress, sir. I said, so what? Well, sir, it's very sir. They used that dress to try and intimidate me. They used that dress with the public. That dress was such a famous dress. It was Monica Lewinsky, part two, the dress. And the judge wanted it for trial. And it was going to go into trial. And then they found out there was nothing on the dress, which I knew. 
and then the judge wouldn't allow it to be used. So they used it as a cudgel. They used it as a hammer over my head. And then the judge, when he heard that it, was, it showed totally negative, totally negative, the judge wouldn't allow us to use it at trial. Then there was an Anderson Cooper interview where she said essentially, no, he didn't rape me. Most people think of rape as a, I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I think most people rape. think of rape as being sexy. Mm. What? Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm. We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> and she gave a very good answer for me, but a bad answer for CNN, for Anderson. And he said, uh, we're going to commercial break right now. We're going. Then she came back from commercial break and she was much more hostile. And like I said before, we got to protect this man at all costs. Let's go.